Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Wa a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir raheem. Atiullah, atiyar rasul ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajeezu, da'eefu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahal. And by the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir raheem. On the subject of the levels of the nafs, inshaAllah we'll recite and read again these seven levels and go more into level two, three, four up inshaAllah, right? When we read it, read a little bit slower. When writing you write, nafs amara evil and the key understanding of amara is evil. And when evil becomes good to the person they are amara and that are is a medical school, a shaitan awareness school to understand the characteristics of shaitan. That's why we are learning these subjects. And so to humble people to understand who knows himself will know his Lord. And it's important to know ourselves, to understand our proximity to our Lord. That because of the fires of these shaykhs and the blessing and energy that dressing upon them, people become drunk thinking they've achieved something. And they want us to understand these understandings to realize where we are. When you're truthful to yourself and it's not for the shaykh to call you out but for you to understand yourself and the ability to understand. If you don't understand these teachings and you're distracted then you won't understand what's happening in your life and most like you, you run away. Those whom are inspired by Allah to achieve what Allah wants them to achieve then they're studying. They're understanding and they're going at a pace to truly understand themselves with sincerity and change. But they don't know why they're studying, they're not paying attention. Then when a test comes that same day they will actually come and ask, oh my gosh I was just insulted, where were you when these discussions were taking place? That's not good and in any school you go to you fail like that. So we start again, nafs amara evil, dun 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 dun. <laughs> and very important, is it echoing? Very important in science, there's called zero point technology, zero, what was it? Oh, just now shaitan's making me forget all. Zero point energies? zero point energy and what they're trying to accomplish in science is that if you produce a, a motion for example for us to understand this haqqaiq in, in relation to how science is rushing to try to find it. You provide a push, a thrust on a ball on a very flat surface, you push the ball with a force of energy. They're trying to zero point energy is that this ball just to keep rolling. You provide an initial boom and you're thinking this ball will just roll forever. But Allah controls the game and they found this is virtually impossible without using magnets and all sorts of gimmicks and because there's a friction. There's a, there's a friction that causes the ball to begin to stop. Many variables Allah will produce so that ball by one push does not keep rolling on a flat surface. You have to keep applying an energy to it. So they want to reach because they think they're clever where you put just an initial charge on something and then it keeps producing a charge. But there's always a friction and that friction is shaitan. If you had the ability to zero point energy yourself where you realize, oh I'm Amara and I'm now going to rise to these levels. Well then you would have discovered zero point energy. 
that you can merely accept Islam or decide you want to do good and now you're rolling. And that you don't think shaitan is a friction in your life and that he's planning now to stop your role. So we, are we clear on that analogy? That if you could do it, you would have discovered zero point energy. You just merely accept your shahada and now everything going to be great. You just can skip down the path all the way <laughs> to paradise. But no, Allah provides a friction and that's the game of dunya where shaitan now comes to your path even stronger and says, you think you're going to reach and you're going to keep tripping, keep making it mushkilat, keep trying to make a difficulty so that you don't roll peacefully to the next maqam. Because Allah wants us to want each other, right? If he didn't want us to want each other, he would have sent everybody their own divine book as a guidance. So then why the concept of sending prophets salam? Because they were exemplars of a divine truth through the faculty of their face. So the sifat of their face was something to be inherited, why? They hear the divine, they see the divine to everyone to their darajat. They can breathe a Divine Qudra that not from this dunya because they need an outside force continuously pushing them. As a result they speak for the Divine because they're not just operating on their own power. Everyone could do that if everybody could lift themselves from a child from a hole and bring themselves to guidance because Allah would distribute books to everybody in their sleep. And they would stop the bad that they do and go towards guidance. But that's not the system of dunya. The system of dunya is Allah I have created shaitan as a friction on your path. You're in need, the messengers were in need of the angels and Allah and the angels and humanity was in need of the risalat and the messengers of Allah for the push, the guidance and all the realities so that Allah created a system of a fellowship. We are in need of a fellowship. Self-help doesn't exist is a, is a game from shaitan, self-realization does exist. Realize your nafs and the danger that it's causing. But do you think that you can help yourself by yourself? No, you are the problem. If you were to be confined with yourself, that self would devour you. So nafsa amara is not something that you just decide you're going to change. When Allah want to lift somebody from amara, Allah begins to send the power, sends a light through an event or something in their life, sends an energy, sends a guidance, sends a coordinates. It's an outside force entering into the heart. Now leave this type of character, come towards your realization, come to your Islam, come to your practices. There is a life event that happens that somebody recognizes they don't belong in the bar, they don't belong with this violent character, they don't belong with all of this destruction. So that's the initial thrust, they're all going to hit with something, lift them. Guide them to the turuqs, guide many things. Then from amara, we next nafs that's coming up is going to be the lawama because you're shawarma, you're cooking in that fire, you're coming up. Lawama, now you have understanding of good and bad. So, ma'ammanu thumma kafaru. One day they believe, one day they disbelieve. Because you are continuously in your yin and yang, fighting your desires, your contemplations, all the things that you want and all the devils that are, are fighting with you. When Allah want to guide the servant truly to this nafs, Allah says, there is no guidance except through Allah guiding. Means Allah sends guides when He wants to guide them. And only through the realization of ilm al-ladduni. 
only through ilma laduni will the servant and this is the rope for the servant to begin to be pulled up. Knowledges that are from heavens, knowledges that are of the malakut reality which can even be external understandings of wudu. But to be stuck on just the external understanding, no tariqahs want much higher level. So, ilma, lad, ilma laduni, ilma yaqeen, ilma yaqeen, the knowledges of certainty must be a, a food for that servant to begin to lift them out and into, truly into lawam. Where they're struggling they become conscious of these realities that are being deposited upon their soul from these teachings. As a result they understand the good and bad and that ilmu yaqeen must be in their diet. And if they're not receiving ilmu yaqeen they're continuously struggling in lawama. And that's why they come for many years they were just going to the mosque, they never heard anything, all of a sudden they come across tariqah teachings and they say, saving my life. Why? Because this is a heavenly table, this is the food from, from paradise realities. When that food comes it begins to dress the soul, it begins to bless the soul, it changes the rizq for the soul. It has many different spiritual dresses in which Allah describes on Jummah wear the best of your clothing, not only a brand new suit but your spiritual clothing. These are the medallions for the, the soul of the believer in which the angels are astonished at the lights that these realities have upon the soul. So then the true lawama is in a continuous struggle and the knowledge is being deposited is assisting that servant to pull up, leave the bad and move closer towards the good. Nafs al-Mulhimma is the inspired nafs. The inspired nafs is now listening to these knowledges, understanding the knowledges, Rising with the teaching, make your tafakkur, make your practices, do your awrah, do the zikrs. These are all energy realities. These energies have to dress the soul. We said even before people didn't under think, understand what the ta'weez was, they thought this is just something you know nice writings. No these are realities that are given as a ni'mah from Allah and the reality of everything that comes from paradise, the light that it produces, these lights have to be in the home. These practices and zikrs and awrads that you're doing are opening lights within the heart because these are coming through the signals of what's been given to the shaykhs from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad All of these realities then are being now bestowed upon the servant to reach towards their inspirations. We said the danger at this level is the inspirations. That the inspirations begin to come and the student is confused by the coordinates that are coming on to them. And every reality that they're doing they become prideful, they believe themselves to have achieved something. The devil is capable of imitating the Divine inspirations and the seeker may not be able to differentiate between them. And the biggest danger is that as you're progressing you have a pride and pridefulness of how you've progressed and as a result of your progression what is it that you want when you progress on the path? You want respect. So this is the doctor's office now, you're having inspiration, your heart trying to feel the understanding that, oh when it talks I, I'm, I'm kind of understanding, doing my practices, I'm struggling with myself. Then your nafs enters in and begins to help you and try to play with what you're at. 
and begin to say, yeah, yeah you're understanding, I'll even teach you a little bit too and I'll give you some more information. The danger is the danger of pride because you feel that you've achieved something and you want people to recognize what you've achieved. And when they don't recognize your status and your station or whatever you think you are, what happens with pride? Anger begins to enter into that person. That's why Prophet described that, never praise anyone to their face. If you praise them as if you have cursed them, people don't maybe understand that. So. They go and they say, oh mashaAllah that was amazing, oh mashaAllah you were great, oh yeah, yeah you too, mashaAllah you were great too, oh mashaAllah oh then you're, you're like the, the best one like this, best one like that, best one like this. What's happening is that you're making each other sicker. As soon as you praise somebody in the presence of that person, in the presence of other people, they become sicker. And that's why Prophet described, don't leave me to my nafs for blink of an eye. That its danger is so dangerous that you become sicker, you begin to become filled with pride. So the danger of this station of mulhamma is your pride. Thinking you're achieving something, the praising of one another is going to make the person sicker, that's why the turuqs never praise anyone. It's not going to make the person reach anywhere, it actually will bring all the hasad of everyone else upon that person. And then they become sick from all the eyes of people. So because they adhere to what Prophet gave as a prescription, praising, boasting, all of those, the sickness of this maqam is pride. And the reality of the nafs is going to be filled with pride. So its medicine is what? How do you take away pride? Humiliation. <clears throat> Humiliation is the counter to pride. So that's why when we talked before Humbleness is not your imposing upon yourself to be humble. You don't declare yourself to be humble but Allah puts you through the oceans of humiliation in which everything will humiliate you and throughout your life. This becomes our lifelong process. Internet, people, places, everything humiliates you, disavows you, distance itself from you. Why? It's a counter to your pride. It deflates the pride because Allah wants the servant to reach their realities, not reach their nafs, not sicken themselves to become Pharaoh. So the close proximity to the shaykh intensifies that reality. There's no family relationship that saves you from this. I know I am the brother-in-law of Shaykh Hisham, I am the son-in-law, the grandfather of his daughter's child. So doesn't matter what your relationship is, a hammer still comes to your head. There's no family relationship that saves you from this maqam because Allah doesn't care for it. Allah cares for the purity of the soul. Testing, 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 continuous crushing as a result inspirations come. This is the station in which makes and breaks the servant, their relationship has to be very strong. Their understanding has to be very strong. If they're to rise they have to talk that, Shaykh I'm inspired to watch something else, to go somewhere else, to ask someone else, I want to go here, I want to go there. That's when the wildness of your nafs is coming out. Why? Just to get you away from the fire of this shaykh. It's a distraction with what you think to be holy. 
by divine inspirations, I'm being inspired. I'm seeing in my dream another shaykh come to me and say, come to me, come. Or shaitan can't impersonate, he entered into paradise and talked to Adam And that's why we said also, divorce your dreams, it's all shaitanic. Even you think it's heavenly, keep it to yourself, try not to believe it. Just say, I'm not that one, I'm nothing, it's not for me, it's not important. If Allah want to communicate with you, He has a living microphone right next to you, the shaykh will talk to you. As soon as the sobat begins, inspiration be coming to your heart. So, He answered my questions before even I asked them because they don't need you to ask. The asking is for your entertainment. What's coming as a frequency will come to everyone's hearts what they needed. If shaitan knows that you're the one who wants to have dreams, all day long they're going to play with you. And then before you know it you're never asking the shaykh anything and you're just listening to your sleep talks and sleep walk and your coordinates may go way off very fast. Could take years of playing with you until he got you right where he wants you and then flip you. If the guidance is coming to you live, it's coming with an energy. So that's why then the character is not changing, well maybe you're not listening to the live guidance and you're just playing around in the dream world. So this is a real strong relationship of guidance, why? Because imagine yourself that now a wind is going to come from every direction and blow your nafs in every direction possible and you hold tight. Because this wind is going to try to like a tufan, is going to spin you in every direction. Hold tight to the rope and don't separate. Now nafs al-mutma'inna. Nafs al-mutma'inna is an opening after the servant is understanding the ocean of continuous humiliation and the reality of humility. This is the ocean of good manners. Ilayanta maqsoodi wa ridat matloob. I pray Ya Rabbi for your happiness and your forgiveness that you be ridha with me and that you forgive me what I'm doing wrong. And Prophet said, I was sent to correct adab. This the, the only praise that Prophet had is that the reason for Allah just sending me was to perfect the adab of humanity through the deen of Islam. So the, the purpose of Islam was to perfect the character and the akhlaq of people. If it didn't correct your akhlaq, it didn't correct your, eric, your character, your Islam is incorrect and imperfect. They say he prays, he does all these practices but they're angry, they're like a nafsa amara type person but then your practices are not powered and they're incorrect and your connection with the central power is not reaching to you. If the character not changing with your practices then you should seek out guidance and the guides that are connected to that power station. So that when you get the fires, understand the muraqabah, do the zikrs, do the salawats, do the awrads, you must be on their Wi-Fi signal entering into their blockchain of power, as a result be uplifting you and uplifting you from these bad characteristics. This is the reality of maqam al-insan opening because now lights within the heart are coming and we gave the talk on the insan. There's two noons and two lights in insan. And this was under Zulnoon, Jonah and how that reality opened into the reality of, of Sayyidina Yunus. That the two noons have to open and the secret of the seer has to begin to open within that servant. Hadiya yeah, yeah, read the inshaAllah slow so then people want to understand the different levels of the nafs al-mutma'inna, the the, the nafs of certainty and openings. It is the self that has ascended to the first station of development towards intimacy, contentment and love for Allah. Its refinement is attained through increasing commitment 
and through honest and sincere fulfillment of obligations with respect to the true way with all its aspects. This is a description of ourself now, if we want to understand how to reach to that and who's in that, it now describes the characteristics of that. Particularly with, particularly with respect to human relationships and to the conduct regarding the acts of worship. The Prophet said, the religion is in the conduct and the best among you in character is the best in faith. Adab. The secure self has entered the pathways, the methods and means of protection and healing. Through self-examination, resistance, striving and devotion. These efforts bear the fruit of certainty in the truth that Allah alone is the actor. He is the cause and motivator of everything, for there is no God but Him and no Lord but Him. And Allah in all of His actions is merciful and generous. He knows the best interests of the self. This certainly leads to trust in Allah. This is now an understanding of tawheed. That's why He said when they reach to there they understand Allah's hand is on everything. There's no bill that comes to you that is large and why it happened and what's going on, it's what Allah wants to happen. No, no sickness comes to you that Allah doesn't know is happening to you, no difficulty coming but Allah wants to see how you deal with the problem, that your heart, is it fluctuating? Are you like really caring about dunya or you, you, you submit to whatever happens, happens. These are now the tests of, of, of sincerity and istiqam and firmness in your belief. They say, if all the dunya goes it won't bother me and if all the dunya comes to me it won't bother me. Well when you talk like that he's going to test you with a little bit of your dunya and see you seem to be extremely bothered with it. Again don't talk falsely when you don't understand how Allah's going to test you, better to keep silent before praising yourself, I'm like this, I'm like that, then Allah test you, I'll take your money away in a second and let's see how your heart feels. I'll give you all the money in the world and see if you get excited. i test you with the sickness and see how you become angry. i test you with this, i test… Allah would test you, better not to talk so that you don't have to have your test come out. And then be firm in our faith and in our practices because the bipolar state has to stop where you're ecstatic over every, ooh I felt this, I saw this, this was great, this was fantastic. And then the bipolar is what? Extremely depressed, oh my god I haven't felt anything, I don't know what's going on, I'm leaving. They go up and down in a day or two days or within an hour. This station opening is death like flatline, they're not neither happy, ecstatic and they're not overly depressed. They're ready to die anyways. So now the, the characteristic has to be understood of the character of that nafs inshaAllah. The self becomes confident that what is with Allah is better and more enduring than whatever is in its possess possession or in the possession of others. So the self becomes secure and ceases to occupy itself with anything other than who it has its trust in, Allah. This is the first level of maturity for the self. The heart begins to shine with the light of consciousness. The ego's power begins to shrink so that purity, refinement, clarity and light dominate the heart. Now the self begins to show its true attributes that were previously hidden. These are the attributes of servanthood, helplessness, all power to Allah, humility, poverty, non-attachment, need and, an and annihilation. Now he is under the command of his human soul which takes pleasure in, the follow in following the example of the Prophet He possesses the qualities which Allah praises. He is kind, generous, patient, forgiving, sincere, thankful, content and at peace. Every word which comes from his hips, <laughs> every word which comes from his lips is holy. <laughs> For you is hips, yeah. <laughs> everyone else lips. <laughs> Either from the Holy Qur'an or from the tradition of the Prophet or from the teaching of his soul. He is a teacher not only through words but also by example. Miracles which transpire through him he, he attributes to other causes, never claiming them, disowning them to the point of denying them. 
His every action corresponds to the highest. He has regained the name of Insan, the true human being. The name Insan is derived from the word Uns, being close, intimate with one's Lord. Thus, his Lord will take him by the hand and lead him forward without much difficulty from now on. Its remembrance is truth. Um, means then their nafs, their ilm yaqeen is opening. They've been trained in ayn al yaqeen. That they've been trained and the nafs at that level it's opening its reality for spiritual vision. Its characteristics are essential to understand the characteristics of their noon, their, the, the light within their heart. We said the dul noon, the two noons are for nar and nur. That Sayyidina Yunus when the light was not at the light of perfection, the dawah and the teaching was not changing anyone, became disappointed, ran off to a boat and on the boat a storm thrown into an ocean. This is the ocean of realities and in that ocean of reality a big hoot came and devoured him. And awliyaullah teaching Mawlana Shah Naqshaban came to complete his light. And in that training and zikr of who and all the realities bestowed upon was given the reality of the tulnoons. After that he came out as zulnoon. No longer Sayyidina Yunus but Sayyidina Zulnoon that the nar and the fire of his heart ignited, perfected in the heart and as a result the nur that came from his face was fully ignited. So if they're deficient in one of these lights the guidance is not kamil. This is now the understanding of entering into the oceans of kamil. And this is all within the ocean of iman, not even maqam al-ihsan. These are the darajats of faith. So when people think they have faith but they're at level two and just doing good and bad, angry, fighting, yelling, screaming, no, no that's not even faith. When we're starting to get into the ilmu yaqeen that they're being fed the ilmu yaqeen, that was the first state. Because the ilm yaqeen has to be the food that lift you. But at this state you know ilm yaqeen is something from your heart that's coming out from the teacher's heart, no other teacher. That's why you don't post from other people, you're not reading from anyone else. You have to know your teacher's secret because that shows its own sickness. That ilmu yaqeen of their reality has to be coming out. So one ilmu yaqeen was bringing you, this level the ilmu yaqeen is now dressing you and coming out from you in this understanding inshaAllah. The next level of the nafs al-radiya, it's content and it has to do with spiritual vision and certainty beginning to open upon that servant. That Allah's rida and satisfaction is dressing the nafs and the, the ruh and soul of that servant. And as a result of its dress Allah is bringing that servant into the proximity. This second stage is the second stage of kamil, we're reaching again closer to perfection and kamila and ayn al yaqeen and certainty is opening for them. InshaAllah we read from this one. Yes, nafs al As the secure self ascends to its Lord, the lights of the heart increase and fill the entire body, transforming the sensual desires of the ego to the desire for what the Prophet brought in the Qur'an. Now hardship and ease are the same to it as are harm and benefit and without and withholding and giving because it has become certain. Ah, aq yaqeen, this, this yaqeen that they're talking what we said is what? Your flat line. So when somebody says, uh, I don't care if all the world was given to me or all the world was taken to me, that's this level and you'll be tested. And when the world is taken from you, why are you panicking? And if the world is given to you, why are you excited? And if sickness comes to you, why are you panicking? Everything has to be and Allah monitors the heart, eh, it's, it is what it is. 
and Allah is the one whom provide and Allah is the one whom takes and Allah want to see and monitor the heart because you're now drawing closer to the Divine the Presence, inshaAllah. At this level the self's creed is that if it is tried it is patient and if it is given it is thankful, if it is deprived it is accepting and if it is, if it is wronged it is forgiving. It has now become the self with a wholesome and sound heart. It fluctuates in all its states between trust and regulation and contentment and surrender. The characteristic of this self is constant cheerfulness, gratitude and thankfulness no matter what happens. In this reality Ayn al-Yaqeen is essential, Hezbollah not Lebanon, <laughs> the party of Allah is the party that goes in not goes out. Their fight is not on the outside, their fight is in the depths of the tunnels of their being. Their fight is not to can be conducted on the dunya. I don't need to argue with you, I don't need to fight with you, I don't need to yell with you because you have absolutely nothing to do with me. Who, who are all these people? If you're in the ocean of tawheed this is all about Allah. Allah make him angry at me, Allah makes him happy with me, Allah makes him give to me, Allah make him spit at me. So what do I have to do with them? My, my, my business with Allah So these are people who they have Ain al yaqeen. If you're focusing on fighting on the surface you're in the wrong battle. Fighting sur surface means trying to resolve issues in dunya. If we were trained it was no your heart, you should have been in your tafakkur, been in your contemplation, ufa'udu amri in Allah, in Allahu basirun bil ibad, Ya Rabbi ya, you see my condition and you go into your sujood and Ya Rabbi grant me relief, grant me a, a qudra and a power and every inspiration comes to when you break the Buddha. <clears throat> when you break yourself and you cry and you're sad and difficulty comes to the servant, it's cracking the idol. And in their sujood and in their practices and in their connection is every relief to them. When Allah said, if I don't put a fire around you, you're never going to run out. You're never going to teach your soul to come out, it just wants to stay and be fun and happy with everybody in there. Allah make your life like fire in which your satisfaction is to run. If He makes it like a beautiful behisht, you're not going to leave your body. You're not training yourself to send your soul out of your being. You're training yourself to keep your soul inside, inside the home, inside everything great. I don't want to talk to anyone bothering me, I don't want to do nothing. I run from every type of confrontation and conflict and run from everything. No Allah said, no I'm going to make a fire all around you all the time. And your only peace is what? Qul ya nahru kuni bardan wa salama inside their heart. That they connect inside their heart, that they make their sujood and Allah draw close to them and said, yes this is where I am. Your solution is in here not out there and they draw close into their tafakkur. As a result Allah opens the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why Ayn al-Yaqeen is now opening Haqiqat al-Muhammadiyyah. Why? Because Allah for every sickness is a cure, He says the sickness of your entire being and your entire creation its cure is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Build and perfect your relationship. Only when everything else is cracking their yaqeen is becoming firmer and firmer into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And they understood now this ilmu yaqeen that's coming and inspirations are coming it's all from the heart of Prophet The ayn al yaqeen and the vision of their certainty is all the ruhaniyat of Sayyidina Muhammad So their ilm and their ayn open for them the haqq and the truth of Allah which is the reflection of Sayyidina Muhammad And the ruhaniyat of that reality to begin to open for them. So now. 
with that ilm al yaqeen, ayn al yaqeen, haqq al yaqeen, that's why insan two noons the nar and nur open and the seen is in the middle of insan. And the seen has the ilm al yaqeen, ayn al yaqeen, haqq al yaqeen, what? Nur al anwar wa siddat al asrar, right? The seen in the middle of insan. The secret is what we're all searching for. So these two lights have to be on, your heart has to be ignited, your head has to be shining and your life was in pursuit of these realities. When this haqqaiq is opening you are now becoming kamil because this is insan, when he's lit up he's kamil, his noons are on, his seer is, is flowing so he's insan and he is now kamil in the oceans of Allah's Divinely perfections. The nafs they call here safiya, the complete self, ilmu yaqeen flowing from them. Read this one, Shah Shaykh. Seven. Allah will bring those whom He loves and who love Him. They will be humble towards the faithful and stern towards the, the deniers. They shall strive in the way of Allah and will not fear any blame from the blamers. This is the favor of Allah that He grants whomever He wishes among His servants. Allah is all-encompassing and all-knowing. Then, then follow me and Allah will love you and forgive your sins. Allah is the forgiving and merciful. Surah Ali Imran. This is the station of the completeness of servanthood. This is actually, قُلِنِ كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُونَ اللَّهِ فَتَبِيُّونِ when Allah that's all the Naqshbandi teaching, Allah tell them because this is the station of love where everything of dunya is now been annihilated, they reached into the reality where Allah why Allah created creation which is why? To be known, to be known is an immense act of love, so to be known then must be the most loving symbol of Divinely Presence that Allah wants to be known by. So, La ilaha illallah wants to be known by Muhammadun Rasulullah Therefore, Habib Allah, Nabi Allah. Allah attached His Divinely name to the name of Sayyidina Muhammad give you just a drop of its understanding, more than that they cut your head. But this is the ocean of immense love in which everything is reflection of why Allah is creating this out of these oceans of love and through that love everything is a reflection of wanting to be known. We said the flower it gives a khushbu, why? Because it, it wants to thank the sun for its beautific fragrance. So why Allah gives that analogy? Because even the sons are thanking Prophet because he's the symbol of the shams, he's symbol of, I'm sending my light upon you, what are you going to do? I'm going to fragrant and give all the beauty of my character to you. When the sun shines on them they don't give porcupine, they give their fragrance, they give the best of what Allah has given to them, they're giving as a gift to Prophet when the sun shines upon them. Every expression of beatific emotion they found Allah in that reality, that Allah reflecting into that ocean of reality. This is the station of the completeness of servanthood to Allah. Through the completeness of following the teachings of his beloved Sayyidina Muhammad The one who reaches this station is blessed with knowing the complete love of Allah for him and for his Prophet This is the station of beauty, maqam al-ihsan, and it is above all the stations of faith that preceded it. In this station the servant has completely attained the level of the most beautiful station and so enters into the light of his beloved, the chosen, in the station of two bows lengths or nearer, in the footsteps of the beloved Sayyidina Muhammad it is the final st level in the stations of the self. This station has no end to its ascension and refinement. The people of this station have nothing in their hearts but the love of Allah and His Messenger and those who are loved by Allah and His Messenger. At this level the completed self becomes the mirror of the light of the essential prophetic Muhammadan self so that it attains the complete attributes of love and servanthood. The emptied, polished 
as a result they reflect and that was the reality of the hadith that the believer is a, ref is a mirror to the believer. That if you empty yourself, perfect yourself with good character as you're entering into this ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah Prophet begin to reflect all his perfection upon that reality. When that mirror looks to La ilaha illallah Allah begin to reflect all the names and attributes upon the soul of that person. So means their soul is receiving from La ilaha illallah all the names and attributes and they, they witness their soul being dressed by that. And when it directs itself continuously to Sayyidina Muhammad Prophet dressing with all the prophetic beauty and dresses and lights upon what they call Haqiqatul Muhammadiyyah. You finished? You finished? Read. No, if you didn't finish, don't, don't say you're finished. In this station the self enjoys the lights of manifestation of the attributes and essence of Allah so that it fluctuates in the light of bliss in all of its stations and states. It is an angelic self of light inside human bodies. The truth is that it, it is selfless. It has no choice and if given a choice it would choose only what Allah loves and is pleased with. If it is asked whether it is receiving or deprived, it would not know because love has overpowered it and, it's, and so it is totally unoccupied with causes. It is annihilated through love, fascination and divine love into the light of the beauty of the essence of the Lord of causes who is its beloved and protector. The people of this station are the people of divine love and passion. They are the people who follow the true footsteps of Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam. They are busy with their love and worship of the truth and are not distracted by creation except to fulfill their obligations. And since they have become a mirror of the Muhammadan Nur, they are constantly in the prophetic presence. They are the leaders of religious knowledge and they are the lights of Gnosis, Marifa, and truth. Through the lights of their hearts, the hearts of those around them are illuminated and through their remembrance mercy descends. They have all that they desire and they only desire love of Allah and His Messenger. They do not seek this world nor are they occupied by the next world. All their concern is intimacy with Allah, to hear from Him, to be near Him, for they regard even a moment of separation as torment greater than hell. In the middle of everything, having found the center, the soul finds its proper place. It is a point without length or width, not covering any area or space. Thus it is pure. There is no wish, no claim. It is the beginning and the end. When the, be when the being who possesses this pure soul moves, his movement is beneficent power. When he talks, it is wisdom and music to the ears. When he appears, it is beauty and joy to the beholder. His whole being is worship. Every cell in his body is in continuous praise of his Lord. Above that level is the oceans of Maqam al ihsan in which everything that soul does is witness Allah sees Allah in all creation. And sees that creation look back to him as if Allah looking to them. That's the meaning of that hadith that worship as if you see Allah and if you don't or if you do see that Allah seeing you. Look to the flower, they see Allah in that flower and its beatific fragrance. And through the flower they can see back to themselves that they see Allah looking at them through the flower, through the bird, through the praising, through the emotion and through love. Every act of love and emotion of love is from Allah When you're in the zikr and you're crying, Allah is the tear that made that emotion to come through the servant. When they're happy, it's the happiness of Allah that coming. When anger is from shaitan, only when they're angry for the sake of Allah that an injustice has occurred against humanity. They have the anger of Allah but anger in general is the satanic. But everything beautific and filled with love, they see Allah within that emotion and within all of its beautific oceans. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.